Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the first ever School Governance Conference to Seat at the Table. Thank you all so much for being here. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Um, this morning, uh, I was on my way out of my house and, and driving down here. And, um, you know, the skies had opened and it was, it was treacherous. And I have gates that, you know, at the front of my neighborhood. And the power went out and my gates wouldn't open. So I'm sitting in my car in front of these gates and the, this, the rain is pouring. And so I get out of my car and rain is pouring down on top of me. And I start shaking the gates, trying to get them to open like a crazy person. Luckily, one of the other people that is here this, this, today, this morning with us, um, she lives a quarter mile down the street, and I called her, and I was like, you have to come pick me up immediately. And uh, so she did, so she's a good, a good person and a good friend. Um, but so luckily, you know, I'm here, that's good. I don't think my gates have still have opened yet. Um, so my wife and child are trapped uh, in our neighborhood, um, which is fine. So anyway, so thank you all again uh, uh, for being here. You know, this, this time of year is always very exciting for me. I, I've, um, was a teacher for years in, in Fulton County. I, I taught at North Springs High School for nine and then two years at Milton High School. And uh, about this time of year, as ready as you are as a teacher, if we have teachers in the room, I'm sure everybody feels this way, come Memorial Day, you know, it's like, Ugh, I'm ready to go, <laughs> ready for summer. Um, but every year at this time of year, that, that week or so right before pre-planning, I always got super excited. And even, even now, being at the central office, um, I still get, get excited about the beginning of a new school year and, and all the great work that's going to happen in all of our schools. And, you know, with that being said, this is uh, going to sound like I'm, I don't mean to brag about myself, which is what you say right before you brag about yourself. Um, <laughs> is that I'm about to start my 15th year in, in Fulton County. And um, you know, when I mentioned that I worked at North Springs and Milton, uh, part of my time at, at both of those schools, North Springs was a conversion charter way back in the middle of the sort of mid-2000s. And I was on their governing board at that time. And then when I went to Milton High School, uh, I actually served on their school governance council there as well. Um, and if, if any of you all know Cliff Jones, Cliff Jones was my principal at the time. And uh, I ran in the teacher election. He, I remember he came up to me one morning in, he, in the hallway and he said, you know, Scott, you, you won the election. You're going to be on the SGC next year. You know, congratulations. He said, you beat someone, like just barely, you beat someone named Abstain. And um, I, I, look, I'll, take, I'll take the win any way I can get it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. And so I served on the SGC and um, you know did a lot of uh, uh, was, was really excited about the work that we got to do and and I don't tell you all this just to give you sort of you know my, my list of, of things that you would put on a resume perhaps but just to say that when I came to the central office school governance department is where I always wanted to be um, it was the department that I wanted to go for if I was gonna make a jump and so uh, you know, th this idea of shared governance and this idea of having different people at the table with different perspectives, um, you know, doing great work inside of the school is, is the thing that has been um, always really, really important to me and a passion uh, uh, of mine. So having said that, you know, believe it or not, we started our charter system way back in 2012. And so we're about to be in a place where we're entering into our seventh year. Right? And if, if for those of you who don't know, maybe if you've been on a council for a while, if you've been a principal in our district for a while, you may remember that when we rolled school governance out, we rolled it out in three phases. Right? We had what we call cohorts, cohort one, two, and three. Um, and we're actually at a place where all three cohorts have gone like we've gone a second cycle. Um, a lot of you in this room, I know, I remember your faces were a part of the strategic planning process last year. So we've actually come to a place where now every single school has written a second strategic plan. The strategic plan is aligned to our district goals, our district plan, specifically in the four focus areas. By the way, you'll notice that the four balloons on your tables mimic the four colors of our four pillars of our district plan. That was, that was intentional. That was intentional. Okay. So we wanted to make sure that we're constantly thinking about you know, the, the four pillars of our district plan and, and the four pillars of your school plans and the great work that's about to happen. But the point of, of me saying you know, why we're entering into this, this, this seventh year is that you know, I actually have, have been the director now almost a year. 
um, almost a year uh, 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 for school governance. And, um, but previously from that, you know, I think a lot of the, the work and a lot of the trainings for those cohorts were, were created to, to roll out, to establish a charter system, right? We kind of had to start from the ground up. And, and if you think about it, like Fulton County, we're, we're a unique district, right? Not just from our geography and, and you know, our student demographics and all these other things, but when you think about charter systems in Georgia, there are a lot of charter systems in Georgia, okay? But many of them are very small, fairly rural districts, okay? Aside from maybe Atlanta Public, um, there's really not another charter system like Fulton County. And so we had to have some really strong processes and practices in place to establish our charter system. But we've done that now. We've established it. And so I think we're at a place now where we're looking ahead into the future. Okay, what's the next phase of school governance going to look like in Fulton County? And that's really what the purpose of this conference is today. It's not the end. It's not the only thing. But it's the first step of many. And that is thinking about the next phase, thinking about how do we take these foundational skills that we've developed and really go on to the next step so that we have highly effective SGCs across our entire district. Okay, and so we think that we have some content set up for you today um, that will be, again, the, the first step and the first phase of that. Um, and we know that a lot of you have registered and signed up for some, from some different things. You have an agenda in your, your folder. Um, and I'm going to speak to that in a little bit, but, but that's really what the idea is um, of this particular conference. And so as we enter in to this conference, two things I want you, I'd like you to think about, if you could. The first is to get to that, that goal of having highly effective SGCs across our district. We need to come up with and think about, well, what is the roadmap for you all to get there? What are going to be the things that really drive your work so that you know at the end of the day, this is where we're going to be. One of those things, I think, is your new strategic plan. That's going to be one of the, the bedrocks, the foundation, if you will. Okay? The other thing are these standards of effectiveness that, that, that we've created, that we hope, again, will be a roadmap for you all as you do your work this year and in subsequent years um, to make sure that you're, you're headed in the right direction. And those three, those, those standards are, are separated into three big buckets that we affectionately call the three C's. Okay, they're clarity, culture, and communication. Those are the three main areas that we think effective SGCs should be operating under. And, and those were done thoughtfully, clarity, culture, and communication. While we don't have something specifically called student achievement for one of our, for one of our, uh, our, our standards, clarity is that overall bucket of, of operating with your strategic plan, driving towards the outcomes and the goals on your plan. But culture, how we work together, fits, fits really into our, our culture, people and culture idea on our district plan as well. And then finally, communication. How do we work and, and interact with our stakeholders? Um, so that's the first thing I'd like you to think about as you, as you participate in some of the sessions that you signed up for today, is how do these things relate to these three Cs? This clarity, culture, and communication. And then the second thing that I'd like you to think about today is as we are on this, this sort of precipice of, of new, uh, or this next phase, if you will, uh, of school governance and, and going to this next level of highly effective SGCs, it might require us to, to think a little bit differently, okay, in our councils. It might require us to lead a little bit differently in our councils. And so you're going to notice around a lot of the, the banners and the different things that are out in the, in the auditorium and, and on your, your pamphlets, there's a hashtag that says leading differently. Okay, and so the leading difference, again, is to think about how is this going to look in my council? What are the things that I'm experiencing today in these sessions that I can bring back and share with my fellow council members? Share with my principal if, if they're not here today, that, that's okay. Um, but those are some of the things that, that you want to be thinking about. And so um, with that being said, um, I think what I would like to do is... Uh, invite someone to come up here who's, who's been very, very supportive, not just of me, but of our team, um, very supportive of the idea of even putting this conference on, putting this together. Um, he, uh, you know, kind of came to him with this idea, and he was like, it's, it's great, let's, let's go with it. He's been very, very supportive and told me, you know, from the jump that he was going to be here today and, and participate with us. So um, I'd like to take a second and invite 
the assistant superintendent of school governance and accountability up to say a few words, and that is Dr. Daryl Hill. Good morning, everyone. So as Scott said, I'm Daryl Hill. I'm the Assistant Superintendent of School Accountability and Governance. And the Governance and Flexibility team and I are really elated that you took the time on a Saturday morning to come out and get this learning from the Seat at the Table conference. Um, we're really excited about this idea. When, as Scott said, when he came to me about it, I thought it's something that we definitely needed to do and we look forward to doing it in future years. So at this time, what I want to do first is acknowledge some of the special guests that we have. Um, first is Katha Stewart, a board member. <laughs> then we have Amy Barger, our assistant superintendent for learning and teaching. <laughs> Kirk Sykes, uh, the area executive, one of the area executive directors for the South. <laughs> Kirk Schramm, the area executive director for Central. And Brandon Gaskins, another area executive director for South. So uh, one of the things that Dr. Rose has often talked about with us is having a North Star and creating community and coming together. And so what we'll do right now is we'll invite him up to have a conversation with Scott about that shared community and his vision for uh, school governance councils and collaboration. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take that. Yep, far chair, that's it. So we wanted to do a, an Oprah style interview here today. You will not find any keys for cars under your seats or washers and dryers or anything like that. Okay, so this is gonna be just a few short questions with Dr. Rose for him to, to give us um, a couple of his thoughts on this conference and SGCs. And so with that being said, we'll get started. Dr. Rose, thank you so much for being here this morning. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Um, so tell us a little bit about why you think school governance councils, yep, no worries. Um, why do you think school governance councils are so important to, to Fulton County? Uh, so first off, is my mic on? Am I on? <laughs> so let me, let me work to get on. I was a little nervous about this. Is it me? <laughs> <laughs> now, test? There it is. Um, this setup is really unique. I'm a little intimidated. Uh, being in this chair. So that's what we're here for. First off, thanks everyone for coming. This is this is our first attempt at this kind of format. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely not um, one person's idea. This has come mm -hmm. from a team saying, what's the next step for us? Kind of our 2.0 version of how we assemble and train and tap into each other's collective wisdom, school to school, in terms of our governance model. So just the fact that on a Saturday, uh, not a very beautiful Saturday, when still lots of people are out on vacation or away for the weekend, you're here. And I think that's a, it's a testament to your dedication and focus in our school. So I appreciate that. So I forgot the question. Go sure, ahead. No, no worries. Why, why are school governance councils so important to, to Fulton County? Well, I'm going to focus at the school level. Um, those who have been working in a school know that it's, it's really complicated. It's, it's actually really uh, messy and just really important work. And the bottom line is there's, there's no principal or set of teachers that know the exact answer every day. And the concept of a governance council is admitting that we can't do the work alone. Educators are not enough regardless of how talented, and of course we hope um, and believe our educators are very talented, but that's not enough either. So the intent is to create this system, this ecosystem that kind of just admits that. It says for us to be great, we have to figure out a way to open our doors and invite people into the conversation and tap into the collective wisdom of the community. The, the goal of a governance council should be to galvanize the community around the schools because in many ways the school is the community mm -hmm. if you really think it through. So I just think it makes tremendous sense for us to have a system and a structure that gathers people around the table 
put students in the center of the table and, and begin to talk about their specific needs. Um, and I, I know that we're constantly learning how to do that. This is really messy work. Shared governance is messy. I, would people agree that shared governance is messy? Um, but it's the right messy. In fact, um, Katha Stewart um, was a governance council member before she was a school board member. And as a school board member and a governance council, I think she would agree that shared governance is messy, right? It, it is. But it's the right thing to do. And so I appreciate us that we're constantly willing to lean into that and say, regardless of sometimes our concern on efficiencies or whether people are getting along or what the focus of the school is, just gathering people around the table with students at the center is just the right thing to do. So I'm thrilled that we do it. Great. Um, so in my opening remarks, I had mentioned you know, the three C's that, that we have as, as a, a school governance council um, team and department. And the three C's, again, are culture, clarity, and communication. And kind of want to get your idea of, of how you see those, those ideas fitting into our school governance councils and, and even into the greater work of, of Fulton as well. Well, I think, I think they're the right words. So if you start with clarity, for example, if um, I mentioned schools uh, just have many, many details in order to support students who come with incredible challenges and incredible gifts, um, our intent is to be able to individualize as best we can for all of our students. And for a teacher to know how to differentiate in a classroom, that's hard enough. And then when you start looking at the school as a, as a larger um, system, how do you meet every child's needs, every family's needs? It becomes, it becomes hard. So therefore, you need to have focus. And if you can't clearly describe your focus, well, then you're not focused. Mm -hmm. And so the concept of clarity, to be able to say, this is what we're leaning into at this, at this school, this is what we're working on, is really, really important. And I will tell you that the dilemma that we face in schools is this constant overload of um, initiative and acronym one after the next. And the dilemma is if you say we're focused on these 30 things right now, um, bottom line is that's, that's too many things to juggle. So you need to be clear. A school needs to be clear. A district needs to be clear on these are the things that we're going to be really good at. And this is why it's best for students. And it can't be everything, which is sometimes really hard, which is why you have a governance council to be able to say, what things are we going to say we're going to lean into? And then let's be honest, what things are we going to just say that's important, but we're not even leaning into that right now because we're focused on these things. So clarity is critical. Um, culture, you know, we've obviously named culture as uh, one of our pillars, people and culture is really mm -hmm. important to us in Fulton County. And culture, the way I describe that, by the way, is how we do things around here. That's culture, right? How we do things. Uh, culture, though, is really based upon belief systems. It's based upon some past history. But you have to pay attention to culture because that impacts climate. Climate sometimes is the way people feel about the culture. And our kids are surrounded by the climate we provide for them every single day. So, Paying attention to culture and how we do things is just vitally important. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is communication, um, we know, is one of the biggest challenges, telling our narrative. I actually think that uh, we face this difficult dilemma of people not knowing the true narrative of schools. And I think people often um, are, they gravitate towards rhetoric. They will sometimes pay a lot more attention to what they may hear in the grocery store or on a ball field than what the school district pumps out in a newsletter or even a really cool video. Um, well, it's true, and we're doing our best to ramp up communications in Fulton County, and, and we're getting better. But the true communication will be what people say. Um, and therefore, a governance council having people in the community as ambassadors, knowledgeable ambassadors in the community to say, no, 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 that's not true. The school is doing tremendous things and really focused in this particular way. So we turn the narrative of the community to know that we are doing our best to serve our students and we need their help. 
So the finger pointing that sometimes happens as it relates to schools isn't effective. And so communication, I think, is a key element of a governance council. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one was we talked about communication, clarity, and culture. So you, you hit them all. Yeah. Great job. Sure. Uh, so okay. uh, the other thing that I mentioned in my opening remarks, with, along with the three Cs, was this idea of this hashtag that we have for, for today, this leading differently. And um, you know, we're on this precipice of, of this next phase, if you will, of, of school governance. And I just wanted to get your thoughts and your feelings about what leading differently means to you. Well, lots of things. So um, the, the concept of consistency or constant uh, is, is not going to happen. Right? We know the only thing we can guarantee is constant change. So our intent is to own that as opposed to just being victims of change. So um, what I believe leading differently is just an intent on improving. We launched governance councils years ago with this concept of we want the community to lean in and we want to open the doors to them. So what's the right system to do that, which is mm -hmm. Um, this model, our uh, charter system model. But we've learned, I think we're learning, rather than how you do them, how you do them well, how you constantly try to improve. And then, by the way, that even creates some rubs and challenges. For example, one thing that we faced as a district recently is to say, let's, let's be honest, every school has completely different needs throughout the Fulton County, um, every single school. Um, we often are having conversations relative to this divide of north and south. Um, and that's, I understand that. There are differences at every school. You can drive four miles down the road and there are differences. So we want to be able to provide for those differences, but we are a school district. We are not a district of schools. And as our school board has wisely described and hopefully clearly named this North Star of our goal and our four pillars driven by communication, I think this next wave of, okay, so we are all gonna focus on the same things and provide for differences of our students is the goal. And that's different that's than we were talking about four, five, six years ago. And so we're trying to improve. In fact, this is the example of many ways of leading differently. We have learned that we don't want a school focusing on the individual needs of their students alone. They should be surrounded and working with other schools too. They should know what they're focusing on. The concept is how do we tap in the collective wisdom of each other as a larger community beyond the walls of the school is what we're learning is vitally important. Mm -hmm. If our students in an elementary school will one day transition to a middle school and to a high school, shouldn't those schools know each other intimately? Shouldn't they be aware of some of those systems and structures so that when a child moves from not just one grade level but one school, it doesn't feel like they're, we're pushing them off a diving board and hoping they swim? Because we're actually working together and I think we're that's our next kind of evolution in this process. So we will constantly be leading differently. That is the kind of organization I hope we are. We expect our kids to learn. So our job is to learn and constantly morph and uh, focus on them. So I think it's the right hashtag. I'm not even very good at hashtags, <laughs> but I will do my best today. Yeah, we, we have people on our team that, that you know, hashtag everything. So hashtag, yeah. hashtag. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, you, you mentioned something about you know, the, the North Star that it, our district plan and, and you know last year all of our SGCs and again I said earlier that a lot of people in this room you know participated in, in a hand of writing the, their school level SGCs and uh, there was a lot of work that went into aligning those plans to the district goals and in some cases some of the plans had similar goals to the district and then in other cases some of the goals were unique to the school and so um, I just wanted to get your your take and your thoughts on those, those school level plans and even though they are aligned to the district, how, how, they, how they fit into the local school community and how they can leverage those the right way for the work that they do. Yeah. Uh, first off, two years ago when we were um, as a school board team working through our strategic plan and we were gauging people's opinions and perspective, we talked to over 6,000 people in one way or another. Um, 
that was really, really hard work. And what I kept telling us as a school board is, this is nothing in comparison to what will be next year, which was last year. Um, asking all of our schools to um, zigzag relative to this North Star. It's one thing for us to create a district plan. It's another thing to ask all of our schools, um, can you line up behind us? Can you focus on that? So uh, I was aware going into last year on the kind of work that that was going to take. Um, I've been a principal. Um, I get principal envy all the time. And I know what that's like to gather a team and say, what's our focus going to be? And sometimes, how do we change and modify that? And we were asking 105 schools to do that in a year, even if they had, in fact, done a very similar process the year before. So for, I just want to acknowledge the, the hard work that went into that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, people's willingness, whether they were um, excited about it or not, uh, to go through the process of doing that. Because we are a school district and we are actually a team. So um, tell me again the question. Um, just how, how do, you know, with, with that being said, you know, some, some of our school plans across our district. They have goals that, that are very similar to yes. the district plan, and then they have their, their yes. school level unique goals, and how do they leverage those plans the right way to both you know, align to that North Star, but also meet the needs of the local school community and those kinds of things. And, and that's actually part of the change, right? Sarah, I was talking to a gentleman earlier before we started, and you know, one point he made, which I think is a valid one, he said, you know, it seems like recently, um, it almost feels at times like there's a little less choice in the work. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's a little less flexibility, more rigidity in the process of setting your goals and the efforts. And um, I said that's, that's, that's very real field feedback. Um, it's, it's also true and intentional. The, the bottom line is if we all say, even if a school says, let's, what do you want to focus on? Well, fact is, and we have this system of random acts of improvement, we will not make the kind of progress necessary as a united front in Fulton County. So our attempt is to find that um, healthy state of disequilibrium. We are not asking for 100% fidelity, but we also don't want 100% autonomy. Right, we, we want to find the healthy state where we're meeting the needs of students, but we're also acting in a way that can be supported by Fulton County schools. And I think that's the, that's the place we're trying to find. And sometimes that's uncomfortable. Sometimes that's actually messy. But it's the right conversation to have. And I would never say that we've reached the exact healthy state of disequilibrium. That will constantly be the journey that we're mm -hmm. undergoing. But we are amidst that change. So I know there are some schools that um, have their pre previous work fit really well into the strategic plan. And then some that's felt like, wait a minute, we're not setting the goal? It's been set for us? Well, in some ways, yes. Because we need third graders to read. Right? So um, it's just we, we need it. And therefore, sometimes the, we were asking the schools to shift their goals, if it wasn't focused on that, we need that because that's aligned to where we're going as a district. We need the readers. So I know that, I think that that shows um, where we are as a growing mm -hmm. organism, that we're trying to find that healthy place. But it is true that you know, some schools, their previous plans fit really well, and some they almost had to shove into this North Star that's been created. But of course, that's, that's what I'm just so thankful that people were still willing mm -hmm. uh, to do that on the behalf of the school and the district. So I'm just appreciative of where we are as a system. That's great. Yeah, I, and a lot of the things that you said, uh, I'm glad that you said them. You know, we have um, a lot of sessions today that, that you know, we think and hope will, will align to some of the message you have about being able to have schools tell their story and, and you know, think about the priorities within their strategic plan through um, you know, monitoring their, their plan and those kinds of things. So um, that, that's a good jumping off point and for the rest of the morning. So that, that's great. So let me just say this. Um, yeah. I, I've worked in schools and other school districts and strategic plans are often things where as soon as you say it, 
I know for a fact my audience just checked out. Right? It's, it's, it's not an inviting term. It's not something people usually get excited about. And typically, they're written on pieces of paper that end up on a shelf and dusty. What we're trying to figure out in Fulton County, and I believe it's true, is how is our strategic plan ours collectively? How are we working together? But how is it known? Is it understood? We work so hard at trying to just create focus in our pillars and our goal because we want it to stick. And so my hope, I know today you're going to be talking about that, governance councils are going to be talking about that, but the goal is to take your focus, our focus, and help other people understand it because everyone has to see themselves in it. I'll talk to all of our bus drivers next week. And what I did with them last year, I asked them, who owns this aspect of the strategic plan? And I needed them to say, we do. I want our bus drivers to own academic achievement. I want them to own that. They need to own that. And so, and they are, by the way. In fact, I just got to drive a bus a week ago, and in the bus they're doing, they're putting sight words now in buses. Because their bus drivers were, were asking them, how do you own third grade reading? Is there a way? Can you start asking students when they get on the bus, did you read last night? Are you going to read tonight? Simple things that we can all do to focus on our North Star is what we are going to do in Fulton County. So mm -hmm. we're still, um, we have not hit our stride, but we're, the fact is we're striding. And uh, I'm just very, very proud and confident in this place and, and all of you, so thanks. Well, I think, you know, you, you mentioned the strategic plans being on a sheet of paper that, um, you know, sometimes go in a folder, or, you know, in a corner somewhere. Uh, first of all, we, we created a, we put a strategic plan, your school plan, in all your folders today, so you can carry that around. But last week, short story, um, the, the air conditioning went out at the central office. It was a, a big to-do, and kindly, I'm going to give a shout out to Herds Ferry Elementary, um, right next to our central office. Herds Ferry invited us to, to hang out there for a few days, and I say this because I, I walk into the building, and when all the schools finished their, their plans, we made, I don't know, three by five posters of, of the plan. So walk into Hertz Ferry, their poster plan is right in the front desk and my, my heart just pitter-pattered. Um, it, was, it was lovely, Dr. Rose. Um, then I go into the cafeteria, they were doing standards mastery framework training and uh, they have a little teacher lounge in there. I go in the teacher lounge, there's another Hertz Ferry strategic plan poster in there and then my heart pitter-pattered again. I was like, this is great. So. Um, I think, you know, as we go through this work and our, our school governance councils, you know, continue this work and, and more things like this happen, um, you know, we, we hope that the strategic plan isn't just, you know, a piece of paper that, that sits in a folder and that it's, it's something that's being owned by everyone at the school and everyone in the community and, and that will drive towards that, that North Star. So Mayor Ingram, one of, our, one of our many mayors the other day, and I saw this in, just in a tweet, I wasn't in the meeting, they were having a community meeting and the mayor on the wall had up our pillars in our strategic plan. And she was talking to the community saying, we have to work with our schools, but in an aligned way, because this is what we're focused on. So as a city, we are focused on our, the school strategic plan, the district strategic plan. So to have a mayor giving a lecture showing our goal and our pillars driven mm -hmm. by communication, this makes you and I weird. I, too, had my heart do <laughs> a better pattern. So um, anyway, I yeah. appreciate it. Well, Dr. Rose, we can't thank you enough for, for coming down here today and being with us and participating in this interview and, and sharing your thoughts. It was, it's we're very, very much appreciated. So, Absolutely. So thank you so much for being um, here. I'm going to uh, do a selfie and hashtag it. So give me a second. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Are you ready? OK. I don't get to do this sitting down ever. This is kind of neat. Three, two, one. Thanks, appreciate it. Very good. All right. Thanks so much, Dr. Rose. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Okay, so um, we are about to wrap up the morning session um, for you all to be able to break out to the different sessions you, you have signed up for. Um, I do want to draw your attention, due to, to numbers of registrants and some different things, we actually had to make a couple of adjustments um, for the, the breakout rooms. So inside of your folder, you should have a school governance um, conference agenda that looks like this. 
And if you could make just a couple of changes for me, um, we had to adjust three rooms for three of our sessions. So if you have signed up for telling your story, telling your story, that is now going to be in 217, 217. So telling your story will be in 217. If you signed up for sharpening the saw, that is now going to be in 218, 218, 218. Sharpening the saw is in 218. And then finally, so you want to be a leader, is now going to be in the auditorium. So you want to be a leader is going to be in the auditorium. So just one more time to recap. Telling your story is in 217. Sharpening the saw is in 218. So you want to be a leader is in the auditorium. Any questions about that? So we're going to take this time. We've got about 14 minutes, no, a little longer, sorry, uh, 16 or 17 minutes before the breakout session starts. So if you need to finish up your breakfast, feel free to do that. Uh, if you go out these doors right down this way, there are some restrooms. We encourage you to go out into the atrium here in front of the step and repeat, take photos, tweet, hashtag leading differently. Um, yes, ma'am. Same thing. We apologize. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. So yeah, you can go out and use the, the restrooms, um, gather your, your, your materials. Like I said, take pictures of each other, share them on social media, and then we'll come back in here at 12 o'clock for our final closing session.